Lord God, we just thank you and we praise you today, God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, God, the beginning and the end. 
And we come to give your name praise and honor on this day, most holy Father. Lord, teach us to offer us to offer you a heart of thanksgiving and praise in all of our daily experiences of life. Lord God, teach us to be joyful always and to pray continually and to give thanks in all of our circumstances. We accept them as your will for our lives. We want to bring pleasure to your heart daily. Lord God, we thank you for life, health, strength, food, and your blessings both seen and unseen. Jesus, we want to be like you, who obeyed the Father without complaint. You embrace the chains of humanity when you walk this earth. Convict us whenever we complain or become impatient. Give us your attitude of humility and thankful acceptance. We want to be like the Apostle Paul who learned contentment in every circumstance. We choose to continually offer you a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that give praise to your name. We want to bring a smile to your face, O oh God. Teach us the power of a thankful heart, God. We know that your truth dwells within a thankful heart, O oh God. Lord God, we ask a blessing on the speaker of the hour and the shepherd of this house, that your word will fall on good soil and not return to you void, O oh God. We, we will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Lord God, just bless the service on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
the announcement. Thank you, Craig. It's been worth it. Announcement time, and we have a lot of announcements. Peter's had some things going on, amen. amen. All right. Peter's Growing in Faith Bible Study will be held this Thursday, February 9th at 7 p.m. We are in the book of Exodus, and we are learning all about Moses and Aaron and what those gentlemen are up to. So if you would like to learn, we can get you right in. Book or no book, don't worry about it. We'll get it to you very quickly. So just jump right on in without a problem. We won't even skip a beat. Just jump on in. Peter's Voices of Inspiration Choir Rehearsal will be held on Friday, February 17th at 6 p.m. New members are welcome. The contact person is Sister Helen Young. Peter's Ushers will be traveling to Adams United Methodist Church on Sunday, February 19th at 3 p.m. for their annual Usher's Day. The contact person is Sister Darlene Edwards. Amen. And Peter's Rejoice Choir rehearsal will be held on Monday, February 20th, 2023 at 6 p.m. All new members are welcome. And the contact person is Sister Wanda McNeil. If you would like to do any type of online giving, our Zelle information is petersumc.dunkirk at gmail.com. And that is for any type of online giving that you would like to do. And I do believe that, yes, Pastor Faye has an I was glad when they sent out to me, let us go to the house of the Lord and worship one more time. Many of us have been wondering if we're doing the Lenten cluster this year. Yes, we are. I have a meeting with the pastors tomorrow, and I will get that information out as soon as we have everything finalized. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So at this time, we'll call the ushers forward for the offering. And if we could all please stand to our feet. born 
born in Jacksonville, Florida on June 17, 1871. He died in a car accident in Maine on June 26, 1938 at the age of 67. To name a few of his accomplishments, he was a civil rights activist, writer, composer, politician, educator, and lawyer, as well as one of the leading figures in the creation and development of the Harlem Renaissance. After graduating from Atlanta University, Johnson worked as a principal in a grammar school, founded a newspaper, The Daily American, and became the first African American to pass the Florida Bar. He published works including the autobiography of an, of an ex-colored man and God's trombones. In 1900, a group of young men in Jacksonville, Florida, arranged to celebrate President Lincoln's birthday. James and his brother John Johnson decided to write a song to be sung at the exercise. James wrote the words and John wrote the music. Their New York publisher, Edward B. Marks, made mimograph copies for them and the song was taught to and sung by a chorus of 500 African school children. Shortly afterwards, the brothers moved away from Jacksonville to New York. But the school children of Jacksonville kept singing the song. They went off to other schools and sang it. They became teachers and taught it to other children. Within 20 years, it was being sung over the South and in some other parts of the country. Today, the song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, is known as the Black National Anthem. Please rise if able.
joining us, my brother James Johnson, giving us our Black National Anthem. Amen and amen for the shoulders upon which we stand. Thank you. At this time, we will have our scripture reading. Our scripture reading this morning will be in Psalm. It's Psalm 112 in its entirety, verses 1 through 10. If you could please stand as able. I will be reading from the NIV. Again, that is Psalm 112 in its entirety, verses 1 through 10. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely, the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look and triumph on their foes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed, and they will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. Yes. I have read Psalm 112. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. 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 And at this time, we will prepare for a selection by our praise and worship team. Amen. Amen.
your many blessings. You are a kind God. You are a gracious God. You are a compassionate God. Lord, you bring light to the darkness and you guide our every footstep. We will not be shaken. We will not be discouraged. We will not be defeated because you are by our side. Our heart is steadfast and our love for you and our faith and trust and you will not be shaken. By the Holy Spirit power, help us delight in your commands. May we walk upright before you in all that we do. Now, Father, I just ask that you fill me with the grace, anointing, and power that I may preach your word boldly. I submit myself to you that you can use me for whichever way you choose to. But I choose to glorify you, Lord God. Yes. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. The spirit of the living God fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the true and living God, fall fresh on your servant this morning. And the people of God said amen, amen. and amen. Well, you already heard the reading of our scripture text this morning. It comes from the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, chapter 112, verses 1 through 10. See, last week we discussed the blessing of those who follow Jesus' declaration in the Beatitudes sermon. This week we are still looking at the many blessings of the righteousness. So I can say it, and so I'm living my blessed life part two. See, Psalms 112 celebrates the happiness of those that obey God's commands. See, it describes all of the benefits and all the security that comes to those who fear the Lord. See, the Psalms was written alphabetically, so it, re uh, so it would be easy to remember. So if it was written in English, it may read something like this. A, hallelujah. B, blessed are those who live in deep awe of Yahweh. C, contentment and delight is God's commandment and heirs of theirs, D, descendants, who will be mighty in the land. E, each generation will of the upright shall be blessed. F, fortune and abundance shall undergird their homes. And G, goodness and righteousness shall endure with them forever. So if I was giving my sermon, a sermon title this morning for your listening consideration would be, I have got to praise him. How many praises do I have in the house this morning? I live a sanctified and consecrated 
consecrated life that I may please God. I've been blessed because I am the righteousness of God. See, that's why I got to praise him. Like the uh, song was said, blessed are those who fear the Lord, who will find great delight in his commands. See, when we fear the Lord, we appreciate God's character. See, he loves us. He's a merciful God. He's a forgiving God. He's a kind and compassionate God. See, when we fear the Lord, we're just in awe of his holiness. And we give God complete reverence for his great glory, his majesty, his purity, and power. See, when we fear the Lord, Satan has no power over us. Nothing can cause us fear or stress because we are delivered and set free. We must be obedient if, when we truly fear the Lord. We must obey his commands and live according to his word. See, when we fear the Lord, we must teach our children to fear the Lord. Train up a child in which way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. See, we must train our children to hate sin and to love God's commands. See, when we fear the Lord, we must grow in sanctification. As United Methodists, we believe that we should strive every day for holiness. See, when we fear the Lord, we must worship Him. We must worship Him in spirit and truth. We must worship wholeheartedly. We must worship from our whole being. I'm going to worship the Lord, and I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care who you call after service, because I'm going to worship the Lord. <clears throat> See, when we fear the Lord, we gain a deep sense of spiritual security and the power, and the power, and the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't have to live in depression. I don't have to live in anxiety. I don't have to live in defeat. Because I know the victory through Jesus Christ's blood, death, and resurrection. We got the victory, people of God. The Psalms tell us that our children will be mighty in the land. And the generation of the upright will be blessed. I'm sure we all want our children blessed, right? We must leave a legacy of serving God and others for our children to see. So they too will teach their children. And they will teach their children. And they will teach their children. So we will all be blessed for future generations. They will call us blessed. Have you ever noticed children between the age and four. They just love to help people. Most kids at that age are willing to share whatever they have. You ask a, a toddler, can I have? And they go, hey, right? They're willing to help. They're happy to set the table, wash dishes, sweep the floor. Whatever needs to be done, they want to help. Then what happens to their little spirit? Is it because they're watching their adults? And suddenly serving others become less important? What if we could have that same love of service and acts of kindness as these little children? How different will our world look today? We would know our future generations would be blessed. The scripture tells us riches and wealth and riches are in their houses, and the righteousness are door forever. Once again, people of God, we are blessed to be a blessing. We are not speaking of temptation of money or money becoming our Lord and Savior. But we are also talking about spiritual blessings and true riches. You know, grace is better than gold. Yes. Grace, I mean, gold can't get you into heaven. I don't care how much you got. It's not getting you into heaven. It's God's grace that will get you there. The good work of a righteous man would never fade. That's why we are so blessed to be in this sanctuary today. Because of the good works of the righteous. I have learned so much about Peter's history working on the grant for the Maryland Historical Trust. I'm sure you all know the original church was erected in 1857. Let me say that again. Peters have been since 1857. That means generation after generation after generation. Someone's been doing the work to keep the church going. The righteous gave of their time. 
They gave up their talent and they gave up the finances to keep the church going so we can come down and sit down in these nice pews and have the heat going. Someone did the work. Somebody was on their knees praying. These amazing brothers and sisters served their church and their community after working long and hard days, some as domestic, some as farm workers, but they still took care of the church. And we are living off those luxuries and comfort today. We are living off those prayers today. That's why I got to praise God for our ancestors. I, I got to praise God and give thanks for the prayers which keep us covered and moving today. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, the gracious and the compassionate. As the righteousness of God, Christ, we must share our faith in Christ with others. We must take a walk in dark places sometimes. When we surrender our, our lives to the Lord, others must see our good works. We can be the light by helping the hungry, assisting the needy, and giving hope to the hopeless. We are commanded to strengthen the weak, bring joy and comfort to the lonely and deserted. We are charged to bring light to a darkened political world and so much injustice and hate in the world. We are to be the light, people of God. See, I, I got to praise God for giving light to those living in darkness and providing each and every one of us with us the opportunity to provide comfort and support to those searching for the light of Christ. We gotta go beyond the four walls of the church. We gotta be the light. See, God's caring provision allows us to lend to others in need. God give us the heart to see those in need now and want us to do something about it. We just can't keep walking down the street, turning our, pit, our backs and walking away, thinking the next person is gonna do it. He's calling us to do it. Yeah. Psalms 37, 21 tells us, the wicked borrow but does not pay back. Mm -hmm. But the righteous is generous and gives. Mm -hmm. Also, we can't be hoarders. We can't be hoarders of our gifts and talents. Yeah. Don't think it's all about me. I'm not doing nothing. I'm keeping my gifts and talents. No. Right. See, he, God gave them to us that we may use them to bring glory to his name. See, God has given each of us a special assignment, a special purpose. You never know. Someone may be waiting on you, waiting for a blessing from you because God had created you to bless them. They're there waiting for you to be their answer, people of God. We cannot sit on our gifts. That's why I got to praise him for being so generous and is giving to us. So we may provide and lend to those in need. So the unsaved will know the goodness of the Lord, and they will come to the marvelous light. We go down to verse 6, and that tells us that the righteous will never be shaken and will never be and will be remembered forever. Yes. Remembered forever. I'm sure we all experience weakness, insults, heartaches, pain, persecution and troubles in our life. And if you haven't, keep living because it's going to come one day. But we can remain strong in these times. When we trust and believe in the promises of God, we will have victory over our enemies. Proverbs 12, 3 tell us, no one can be established through wickedness, but the, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. That's why I, I got to praise God when the enemy tries to stop us, but he can't destroy us or move us because we are protected under the almighty hand, and we know where our strength comes from. So shoot your best shot because we're not going anywhere. We will have no fear of bad news coming because our hearts are steadfast. We're trusting the Lord. See, when we trust and believe in God's promises, our faith frees us from a life of fear. You just turn on the news and it's just heartbreaking of the daily threats, but our hearts are secure in the Lord. 
God is still on the throne, y'all. Yes. And he's looking down. And he's going to get us through. He's going to get us through. No matter the situation, no matter the promise, he's going to get us through if we just trust and believe. See, that's why I got to praise him. Those who fear the Lord will not be afraid. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will have no fear. For you, Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. We are blessed with wisdom. Not to fear man. But only fear what? To have reverence for the Lord. You see, our hearts are secure. We will have no fear. In the end, they will look triumph on their foes. We trust in Jesus. We trust in the ultimate sacrifice. See, Jesus became human and lived a sin-free life. He was willing and able. And he died on that old rugged cross. He paid the price for you and I that we may have eternal life with the Father. See, he reverenced his Father in total obedience. He wasn't scared or afraid. That means we don't have to be scared or afraid. But we stand firmly on the word of God. We don't have to worry about anything. If your boss asks you to do something unethical, boldly say, nope. Because I have the fear of the Lord. I'm not fearful of you. I trust and believe that the Lord will see me through. Because I know you didn't give me this job, and you can't take this job away. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, on all the ground is sinking sand. See, I, I got to praise God that I live in security. We have no fear of the enemy. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are more than conquerors. We are blessed with power. Not just with power, but with Holy Ghost power. It goes on to say the righteous have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. The righteousness endures forever. The righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. If we go back to verse 3 for a second, it says the psalmist said we should be generous with our blessings. He also said, implying to be wise and thoughtful about distribution. I don't know if we have any farmers here, but when you plant seeds, uh, grass seeds, what do you do? You kind of throw them, right? Disperse them out all over, right? Because we want growth to go everywhere, right? Most of the time, we don't just pour grass seeds in one spot because then part of the land will be barren and unfruitful. See, the righteous. We give freely. We want to sow those seeds. We want to give cheerfully and generously because we want the whole world to see the blessings of God. When the Psalms is talking about the horn, see, it's an image of power and dignity. Because of our generosity, the Lord will allow us to be lifted up in the eyes of our peers. See, I, I got to praise God because he demonstrates the love of Christ through our giving and be lifted. We can live honored lives. Matthew 6.33 tells us, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Then we go down to verse 10. The, the Psalms tell us what happens to the wicked. The wicked will see and, and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longing of the wicked will come to nothing. We see again this week that God rewards the righteousness, but he ignores the desires of the wicked. See, we are to live our blessed lives. Remember those who walk with the Lord and try to live godly lives are hated by the wicked. Because you're trying to bring light into a dark world. Darkness don't want that. They want you to stay in darkness. What is it? Mushrooms? They want to keep you in dark. People will try to do anything to distract you or break you, discourage you from being about your father's business. But 
no need to worry. It says the wicked will waste away and they have no power over us, the righteousness. That's why we can celebrate as Psalms 1, 12, 12 tell us to do. In closing, when we live in fear of the Lord and not of man, when we live as righteousness of Christ, there's nothing we can't do, Peters. And we can live our blessed lives. We can help those in need. When we sow seeds that uh, change our community, and we see a bountiful harvest, we can tell them, you see, it's the God in me. See, when we take the time and, and pray for others and they see their life changing, we can tell them, it's the God in me. When we are light and we bring others out of darkness, we can tell them, it's the God in me. When we speak life, words of encouragement and love to all people, we can tell them, it's the God in me. When our enemies can't shake us, discourage us, and use us any way they want us, bend us, thinking they can tell us what to do, we can tell them, not today, it's the God in me. When troubling reports, finances, sickness come our way, we don't have to live beaded and defeated. We don't have to give up. We can tell them, it's the God in me. See, when we take the time every day to get down on our knees and praise and thank this holy and righteous God, people will sense something different about you when you walk into the room. Let them know that it's the God in me. I don't know about you today. But I gotta praise him. I gotta give him glory. I gotta give him thanks because of the God that's in me. Amen. Amen. Amen.
that we are in a place, literally in a place in the United States where we can just praise your holy name, where we are not held captive, where we can just praise your name, Father God, and thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. Lord God, we thank you for the word that has gone forth on this day, God. Lord God, that we will feast on it all week long, Father God. Lord God, as we go into the week, Father God, whatever it is that we might be anxious about, Father God, that might face us on tomorrow, Father God, whatever the test is, whatever the trial is, whatever that the diagnosis might be, whatever the court case might be, Father God. Lord God, we know that you already have it, you already have it handled, you already have it settled, you already have it erased, you already have it asked out, you already have it solved, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We stand on every promise that you've made us, Father God, and we thank you in advance, Father God, because you know all about us, God. Thank you for working in the backdrop of the impossible, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for our households, we thank you for our families, we thank you for our lives, Father God. And even for the prayer box, Father God, for every intention that is written there, for every silent prayer, for every tear that has fallen, Father God, that you have wiped up, Father God, we just bless you and honor you on this day. God, in the name of Jesus, we most humbly pray. Amen. Amen.
of all your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and made us with a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night which he was given himself up for us, he took bread, gave it to you. Broke the bread and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father God, we thank you so much for giving Jesus Christ, who, whose body was broken on our behalf, Father God, who was raised on the third day for our sins, Father God, and for our salvation. In Jesus' name we most humbly pray. Amen. Amen. You may take and eat. And now we have a prayer for the Lord. Dear God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, dear Lord, who died on the cross for our sins, who shed his blood for us, dear Lord. We thank you, we praise you, give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may now drink. Mm -hmm. 
and peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion with the saints be with you all. Amen. 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 God is good. Let's do God our hands. How many people got a praise in their spirit this yes. morning? How many people are ready to go out and be that light in darkness? Let us stand for going forth. We're going to say our mission statement. Then we'll do our benediction. And then we can go out and just enjoy this warmer weather, I should say. Because I don't know what you guys, but I, it, it was cold for the last two days. Yeah, I went out Friday night, didn't have a hat. And then that wind hit the scalp. Ooh, my goodness. My God. But he did all the time. Let us uh, recite our mission statement. Serve God. And all people, regardless of race, creed, and gender, support programs and missions which enhance our culture and the lives of God's people. Connect with each other, the community and world. Meet individuals and families where they are. And now our benediction. As people of faith, we have gathered for worship. As people of faith, we now return to the world. Let's go out and share our story of faith, the story of life with the world around you. We share faith and word and deed, speech and action. As we go out and give a living witness, as we go out and testify to God's love active in the world, as we go out knowing that God is with us, share the laughter and the hope, the fear and the tears. To God.